This is Pep Fernandez with the Press Enterprise, and here with the pilot of the USA2 bombsleigh, Corey Butner, at his parents' home in Ukaipa. And Corey, back uh, fresh from Sochi, Russia, uh, from the Olympic Games, and just talk about that experience. And now you're back. I see all your stuff hanging up, friends and family reminiscing about that. Uh, what will you remember about that experience at the Winter Olympics? Uh, the whole thing, everything from opening ceremonies all the way to closing. There's so much going on, and just to experience all of that, especially in Russia where everybody's trying to make a huge deal out of the whole thing. Uh -huh. It was just, uh, you know, for me, a great story for the future. And just to actually be there and now be an Olympian, it's just amazing. Now, I asked your parents this, and maybe this is something you can address, too, that, you know, you have this idea of what it's going to be like wearing the red, white, and blue and being on the Olympic stage. Once you actually got there and had a chance to do it, I mean, can you put that into words? Uh, for that, uh, I'm actually speechless. Yeah. Um, we've you know, been racing for the last seven years with USA on the back, USA on the sled. But for to actually have everything say USA at the Olympics, like just completely speechless. I just can't even describe this the way I felt with everything going on. So. Now uh, you probably wanted a, maybe a better finish there, so that begs the that begs the question though, Corey. Do you want to come back? Do you want to do this again? I know it's a huge chunk of your life. There's a lot of years put into this, yeah, um, uh, but you're still young. You're 32, right? 32. I mean, so you could have another o Olympic Games in you. Potentially, yes. Uh -huh. um, you know, for the last seven years, I've been a lot of local businesses have been helping me financially get there. So it's one thing if we're like the skiers or snowboarders are making hundreds of thousands or millions of Big dollars. Big endorsements, yeah, right, yeah. doing that. But in Bobsled, we don't. And I don't get any federation help money-wise. You know, they do cover the shipping and mm -hmm. costs like that during a regular season, but not all the time. So physically and uh, financially, we'll see. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens in the next four years. All right, so going back to, uh, to Sochi and, and how you perform there and the whole experience, I mean, Anything, like some of the small things that kind of stuck out with you just about the whole experience, the training, maybe the kind of the food you had, the places you got to see, people you met? Yeah, so the biggest thing I noticed, you know, just the Russian people. Mm -hmm. All the volunteers are really helpful, really nice. Even just the, the people there coming to expectate and watch were all real nice. Just wanted to take pictures. I felt like I was at Disneyland. <laughs> the only thing we're missing was the language barrier. Uh -huh. and, and so everybody was just having a great time. I mean, when we first got there, we had time to just ride bikes around, see all the venues with no one around. And like I said, I got chased by a dog. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. It's just all the little funny things that happened uh -huh. that made it worthwhile. Do you look back and say, you know what? I spent seven years of my life for a couple days, you know what I mean? Like two weeks in, in Russia, I mean, but but it's worth it, right? I mean, you, yeah. not many people can say they were an Olympic athlete. Seven years for four minutes of racing. Um, but like I said, the moment they announced the team, it was like I didn't care what happened in the last seven years. It, it was anything that happened was well worth it. So, All right, Corey Butner, pilot of the USA2 uh, US bobsleigh team.